AA Racing. The first stage was held in the Rosslyn industrial area, mostly on tar. It was Hobler Center that set the pace by beating Damso by five seconds over 13 kilometers. The talented Enzo Kins rally, however, was short-lived. He came out of stage one with a badly smoking engine due to a drop valve and retired. Brady Dabner and Neil Watt were competing in only their third rally in the Class A Toyota Conquest 4x4, having moved up from Class B. With Damso as mentor, the Cape Townian is improving with every event. Nuna de Cunha in the Bankman Centre also had a short to event, retiring with a broken rocker arm after Stage 1. Fortunately, the engine failed on Stage 1. We had a problem with the head, so we up. Glenn Derman and Dave Lebkowitz in the Class C Conquest RSI raised a few eyebrows by posting fourth quickest time. First on the road of the team total members, a group of privateers assisted by Total South Africa were Natalians Etienne Lawrence and Rob Paisley in the Class C Conquest RSI. Leon Boerter, partnered by Mike Constable in the Class B Golf GTI, was hoping for a change of luck after a terrible season. They posted the sixth quickest time through Stage 1. The first leg of the rally took competitors from Pretoria to Zanin in the northeastern Transvaal, with a long road distance broken up by special stages en route, including this one at the Warm Bath Showgrounds. Hubbich and Judd were still going strongly, but the lack of a handbrake in the four-wheel drive golf synchro didn't help matters much in the tighter stages. Team Total's Tony Ball and Brian Duncan in the Class B Golf GTI was now stone last, having lost seven minutes in the first stage due to a broken fan belt. The gritty Natalian continued, however, and would later be glad he decided to do so. At the front, Krubler increased his lead over Damso to almost half a minute after stage four. The Catonian took back two seconds in stage five up last, but lost one second again in stage six. Still impressing all and sundry was Glenn Derman in the Class C Conquest, moving up into an excellent third place overall. Brady Dabner was less happy. In stage three, his Conquest slid wide and clipped a rock, puncturing the wheel and costing him one and a half minutes in stage time. He was also complaining that his two-litre Conquest wasn't properly tuned for the higher altitude and lack power. Jan Hubbard's championship chances took a severe blow when the golf shed an alternator bolt and broke a fan belt. It took the crew 16 minutes to fix the problem. But with a 20 second penalty for every minute a team clocks in late at a control, five and a half minutes were added onto his stage times, dropping the Volkswagen driver to fifth. <laughs> Etienne Lawrence moved up to second in Class C after the golf of Chart von der Vault and Cindy Harding was delayed by a flat tire on special stage three. The Natal driver didn't like the long straights of the first few stages, where his car ran out of revs and was waiting for the twisty forest stages to make his presence felt. In the first of the forest stages, a first gear, second gear twister, he indeed let fly with the quickest class C time and sixth best time overall, beating opponent Glenn Derman by 24 seconds. Derman and Lefkowitz had a big fight in stage seven when the car got out of hand due to worn tires and tried to jump a bank. With his confidence taking a sudden knock, the Conquest driver eased off somewhat. After seven stages, Krobler was leading Damso by 21 seconds. The fun of the could the tight end of a bio long to a on some next year of the woman looking more. What's the very thing at all when he drug copy on a man at two pass? Devner and what moved into fourth place. 43 seconds behind Derman. Habich and Judd followed one and a half minutes later in fifth place. Sixth were Lawrence and Paisley in the conquest, with a golf of Bonnevolt and Harding 22 seconds further down. Team totals Ben and Isabel von der Westhuizen in a front-wheel drive Class A golf followed 12 seconds later. They were still up there despite a series of misfortunes, and this included a broken side shaft in stage three, a broken gear lever, the stage thereafter, and a close encounter with a flock of guinea fowl, which broke the radiator mounting. 
Pieces of bark between the rim and the tyre at the right rear bore evidence of a close encounter with a thick engine. Another total team, young Herchen Pecken and Neil Puri in a Class C Conquest, was ninth overall at the regroup. Victims of two flat tyres in an open section, which cost them one minute and 20 seconds in penalties, due to clocking in four minutes late at the next control. The top ten was rounded off by a dejected Leon Buerta, whose service team had to replace a broken rear axle after the end of the first section. As if that was not enough, fourth and fifth gears were also acting up. The service time allowed wasn't long enough for a gearbox change as well. After a four-hour break in Zanin, the cars were regrouped in order of placings. That meant that the Sentra was now first on the road and Kruber ahead of the pack. The second leg only started at 7 o'clock on Friday night and with seven night stages ahead, the Bankman Sentra driver was a happy man in the knowledge that his opponents now also to contend with his dust. Zanin was treated to a rally spectacle as the cars were held round the tight special stage on the outskirts of the town. The big fight for the lead was on. With a niggling misfire now cured and a reasonably strong wind making the dust less of a hazard than it could have been, Damso started making inroads into Kobler's lead. The Hectonian posted three quickest times in succession and three stages into the night, he was in the lead. At the end of the second leg of the total international rally, the gap was 19 seconds over Kobler. In Class C, the dogfight between the two conquests of German and Lawrence and the gulf of Charles von der Bolt continued into the night. Lawrence cracked his car sump on a rock. He drove the last stage of the second leg without gearbox oil, but still managed to tie with von der Bolt for third place at the end of the section. Dermont's conquest developed a mysterious malady, which caused the engine to cut out as soon as he tried to accelerate. This cost him a full six minutes and moved the team down to fifth place. Dropping to seventh overall at the end of the night section were Brady Davner and Neil Watt. They had a spin in stage 10, which left the car facing in the wrong direction. With reverse gear out of order and the road very narrow, they had to drive in the wrong direction until they found a place to turn around. This cost them a full six minutes in stage time. The combination of heat and dust also took its toll. Cindy Harding had a severe case of car sickness, but continued while both Leon Buerta and the Eastern Cape's Keith Coleman withdrew in the second leg due to illness. After a welcome break from just after midnight, the teams were up at the crack of dawn to tackle the third and final leg of the rally. Ten stages totaling 144 kilometers remain. Having been regrouped in order of performance, Serge Damso and Vito Bonafidi were again in the number one starting position ready to defend their 19-second lead over Hrobler and Buerta. Hrobler and Buerta had some severe communication problems in Zanin's tar stage, judging from the in-car camera.
luckily, we didn't record Honus's replies. The confusion cost them only 10 seconds, but in stage 16, the Nissan driver dropped more than a minute when the tube deflated inside the tyre. The tyre casing stayed hard, but there was such a vibration that they had to stop in the stage to have a look at what was wrong. The stocky petrol station owner from Brits also had his hands full with an oversteering centre. The team suspected that the viscous coupling, controlling the amount of torque split between the front and rear wheels, was acting up. Thicker oil cured the problem briefly, but it soon warmed up again, and most of the torque went to the rear wheels, making the car extremely jittery and difficult to drive. Fondervant, Lawrence and Derman continued their Class C battle and filled the next three placings behind Damso and Krobler. Lawrence had the crack sump filled with steel putty and was holding thumbs it would last. Derman had a recurrence of the misfire, which cost him dearly during the night, losing even more time. A consistent and mostly trouble-free run during the night stages saw husband and wife team Ben and Isabel von der Westhuizen move into an excellent sixth place overall in their total support in front-wheel drive Class A Volkswagen Golf. They were a scant 14 seconds ahead of Dabner and Watt, who were now happier with their car's performance and determined to pass the lower-class cars ahead of them. In eighth place were Herken Becken and Neil Faree. An off-road excursion the next day would drop them down to 15th. Moving into the equation, and in an excellent ninth place overall, ex-navigator Wiley Harrington, driving in his first ever national event. The Class C Conquest was built to rally specifications in just over three weeks. The car was fitted with a 1600 engine, but the wrong camshafts gave it a very narrow power band and made it difficult to drive. Wiley proved, however, that consistency was the key word in this grueling event. Damso and Bonafidi were showing the style that has taken them to three national championship titles since 1989, with their sights firmly set on the fourth. With Cindy Harding recovered from her car sickness of the night before, at least Chart was getting intelligible instructions. Hannes Hobler had a real flyer in stage 18, taking 39 seconds off Damso to reduce the deficit to 21 seconds. Brian Loopstra and Dave McGregor did well in the Class B Opel Cadet, but a broken side shaft put paid to their rally shortly before the end. The service team tried to rectify Hrubler's gear problems by changing the gear cluster. In stage 19, however, a confusing instruction in the route schedule saw the centre hitting a cement culvert at 140 kilometres an hour in a fast corner. With serious body damage and the front suspension wrecked, that was Hrubler's rally run and the end of his championship hopes. The pressure was now off Damso, and with an 18-minute lead over Dabner, the Toyota team could afford to cruise to the end. Lowered down in the order, some new names were appearing on the leaderboard. Douglas de Kock and Gerrit Besoydenhout in the Class B Golf took the steady approach to move into an excellent ninth place overall. Johan Clements and Gerard de Villiers lost time with a loose coil wire, but still managed to nurse their not-so-healthy-sounding conquest into 10th overall at the end. The eventual Class D winners were Team Total's Tiernes Villun and Warren Wakeham. The Zanin-based Villun took his Uno to 11th overall, much to the delight of local spectators. The little car took the arduous conditions in its stride. Another navigator-turned driver is the ever-consistent Spotty Woodhead, driving a Class C Volkswagen Golf. The amiable Springbok Navigator is never spectacular, but his mechanical sympathy, which on numerous occasions sees him to the end of rallies when others fall by the wayside. Second in Class D were Christo Ackermann and Andre Pfeiffer in a 1600cc VW Golf. Sometimes rough conditions more often than not necessitated caution rather than speed in this 940 kilometer endurance event. The powerful rear-wheel drive Skylines, driven so spectacularly in the earlier years by the likes of Hannes Krobler and Kasi Kutsia, are now in the hands of privateers. Team Total's John Ogden still gets the tail out. But in the end, it served Damso and Vito Bonafidi in the four-wheel drive two-litre Toyota Conquest 
cruising to their third consecutive win in the total international rally. Brady Davner and Neil Watt had more than their fair share of problems, but put up a superb performance to move up from seventh earlier in the event to second place overall. A gritty performance from Etienne Lawrence and Robert Paisley was rewarded with third overall and a Class C win. The Italian was in his element in the twisty forest stages around Zanin. Glenn Derman and Dave Lebkowitz were unlucky not to finish higher up after an excellent performance. Their conquest helped clinch the first four places for Toyota. After Krobler's retirement, Chart von der Bolt could have won the title if something happened to Damso, and he settled for a finish and a safe place. Husband and wife Ben and Isabel von der Westhuizen went off at the same place where Hannes Krobler retired, but recovered to reach the end of the stage without losing a place. Seventh overall, driving in his first national rally and first event with night stages, could open up a whole new rally career for Wiley Harrington. Trying his hand in off-road racing on several occasions and some track racing obviously provided good experience. Tony Ball and Brian Duncan lost five minutes in penalties when a starter motor had to be replaced, but fought back to claim the Class B victory and an eighth place overall. With their victory, Serge Damso and Vito Bonafidi scored a triple hat-trick. It was their third South African Rally Championship in a row. They became the first team to win the total international rally three times in succession. And it was the third year in a row where the championship was only decided in the very last event. After a string of non-finishes earlier in the season, not many people gave them a chance in the championship. But the Toyota pair recovered to win the last three events of the year on the trot. Their win gave them 159 points in the championship, ahead of von der Bolt and Harding on 135, and Habich and Judd on 119. Volkswagen took the Manufacturers' Championship ahead of Toyota. This morning when we started the uh, third leg of the event, uh, it was about 19 seconds difference between Anas and myself, uh, which made it interesting right through the event. And I don't think uh, remembering for a long time we've had such a close uh, race, you know, and uh, we both going for the championship, which made it all uh, important that we stayed on the road in that. And um, unfortunately, he just went overdone it a bit, and uh, the rally at the end of sort of died a bit. But, uh, from the Toyota side, uh, we're very happy. Third time we won the event and the third time South African Championship. And uh, from the team, uh, we're very happy. Toyota had much to celebrate, taking the first four positions in the total international rally.